So a couple weeks ago, I started seeing all of the blog posts, seeing all of the video reviews for the new 2024 M4 Mac Mini. And honestly, one of my toxic traits is if I see a new cool technology, I'm probably gonna get it. And that's exactly what I did. So uh, like I said, a couple weeks ago, I picked up this M4 Mac Mini. This is the base version. So 599 US dollars that comes with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And for some context, I am a software engineer. And so for my use cases, those specs are more than enough uh, for me to do the things that I need to do, which include building software, uh, building web applications, and running all of the pieces of software that I need to accomplish that goal. But I will say that I did not pick up this computer initially to be my software development machine. I already have two of those machines between my PC and a MacBook Air that can accomplish all of my development needs. So I honestly picked this machine up to be my dedicated music production computer. I uh, love playing and recording music. And as I've been using it over the past couple weeks, I realized just how powerful this thing is. When running the same kinds of software for music production that I'd have on uh, my PC and again on my MacBook, this thing performs and feels way better than on those two machines. So I figured if it can do that for my music production software, it can probably do it for my coding software as well. So this video is going to be all about getting this Mac mini set up to do all of my coding tasks. That includes downloading all of the necessary software that I need and configuring everything to be able to do what I am currently doing on my MacBook and on my PC. After we get this guy set up, uh, we'll come back over here and I'll kind of talk through my development process as it pertains to why do I have so many machines? Uh, obviously you do not need all of this tech to be able to write software and write cool code. I'm just addicted to technology and hardware. Uh, so I like to pick things up when I'm able to do so. So yeah, let's hop into the Mac mini and we'll start setting things up. Alrighty y'all, so I'm inside the Mac mini right now. And like I said, I'll pull those specs up real quick. So we are running the Apple M4 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it doesn't show my SSD on here, but 256 gigabytes of SSD. And uh, I'm going to go through a development checklist here of all the things that I'm putting on my Mac mini to get myself set up for software development, more specifically building web applications. Um, and just a, a preface, I have already put everything on here, but I am just going through retroactively so you all can see everything that I've put on this machine. So starting off, I am not able to do anything on new Mac unless I have Homebrew installed. So Homebrew is an open source package manager for Mac OS. Mac doesn't have anything built in natively, so we need something like Homebrew. There are some other alternatives, but Homebrew is normally my choice for installing um, different dependencies that I'll need for my development environment. So coming over to the Homebrew website, it's very easy to install Homebrew. We just copy this command paste it in a terminal, and that is going to install Homebrew on our machine for us. Now from here, once Homebrew is installed, I'm able to install a couple of different things that I need for my development um, environment in particular. And the first is going to be Node. And again, you could download this uh, straight from the, the website. I really do like to do everything inside of Homebrew. They even give you instructions on how to set Node, for example, on your path to make sure that all your terminals and anything inside of your, your code editors are able to pick this up. So once again, installing this is very easy. Uh, we'll just need to copy this into our terminal, hit enter, and Homebrew will install all the necessary dependencies for us. What's good with Node is it also comes with NPM. So this is the package manager for um, you know, JavaScript type projects. And so for example, um, my front end is running React. So in order to set up my code base on my local machine, I'll need to install all of the packages that come with this project. And I won't be able to do that unless I have NPM installed. Okay, moving on to, you know, that covers my front end essentially. Um, but now in order to run my back end server, so I'm running a Spring Boot application running Java. So I will need Java set up on this machine as well. So we can do that through Homebrew as well. We'll be able to brew install OpenJDK, and then we can point this in our code editor. Um, this will be the JDK that is used for the run and build process. Okay, finally, the last thing that I'm gonna need from Homebrew at the moment is uh, to install Postgres. So this allows me to do two different things. The first is access the psql command line uh, utilities. So I'm able to uh, you know, log into 
uh, databases right from my terminal if I need to, um, but this also allows me to set up any local database that I need, and I use Postgres in my application, so this is a must for me. So just to summarize, the first thing I did is install Homebrew so that I can install uh, Node, Java, and Postgres on my machine. And now that those are all taken care of, we can install a few different pieces of software that will further aid us in our development process. The first is going to be Postman, and Postman allows us to hit our endpoints. So for example, I'm building my Spring Boot server, and if I want to test those locally, I can have my server running, and I can hit my locally running endpoints from Postman. Of course, you could do this from the terminal as well, but Postman allows this nice graphical user interface to um, interface with your endpoints, and you can also save different endpoints uh, so you can reuse them and come back to them later. Once it's installed, you'll get something like this, and you can have different collections for your different applications. So this is my dinner bee uh, application, the one that I'm currently building right now, and I can have different collections for the different types of entities that I have. Uh, and it's really nice, this saves between my different machines. So, uh, you know, I'm logged into my account, and I can just see all of the endpoints that I have um, update them from whatever machine and they'll all update accordingly. Alrighty, so that is Postman and now let's go into the next one. And this is going to be another graphical user interface for interfacing with something that again could be done over the command line, but I like to just have a nice interface to, to do this. And so that is a dBeaver and dBeaver is an open source uh, database tool. So essentially you're able to connect to a database instance. For my use case, I always just use the community version, which is free, and it has, again, as you can see, basic support for relational databases. In my case, this is going to be PostgreSQL. Um, so I just download this. I'm able to connect to either my locally running uh, Postgres instance or my production database. I can see all of my database tables and even go into um, a specific table and see the data that is in that table. I can modify it straight from this graphical user interface, and it provides just a very easy way to keep track of the data that's in your database. Alrighty, we are almost there. We only have three more things that I have to take care of. So uh, now we're going to go into code editors. For anything front end related, I normally go with VS Code. So like I said, my front ends are normally built in React. So I love to run any uh, client related code inside of VS Code. Once you have VS Code up and running, you can pull in your project. And so again, this is my dinner bee project. You can change out your themes to suit your mood. So for right now, I'm ripping this can be dark theme. And like I said, I really just love to run all of my client side code inside of VS Code. When it comes to server side code, as I mentioned before, I'm running a Spring Boot application with Java. And so my code editor of choice for this is always going to be IntelliJ. It was built with Java and just the JDK in general in mind. And it integrates really, really well with the JDK. And getting set up in that environment is super, super easy. I always use the community edition for this as well. It's free and I'm able to do everything that I need to do. Getting set up is easy. Similar to VS Code, once you've got this installed, you're able to bring in your project. So I have my Spring Boot server um, that is running my, my Dinner B server here, and I'm able to uh, run this uh, locally if I would like. We can reference the OpenJDK version that we installed in the homebrew step and make sure that we're able to run our application as well. Alrighty, on to the last thing that I need in order to get this computer up and running for my development needs is GitHub SSH. So essentially, I have all of my code bases inside of a private GitHub repository. Um, and in order to clone those repositories onto a new computer, I have to create an SSH key uh, on this machine so that GitHub knows that it is allowed to uh, clone and, and write to these repos as well. So these are the docs that I always use. Uh, I feel like I have to do this every single time, but it gives you all the commands that you need to run in order to generate an SSH key and set it up in your GitHub account so that this computer can take actions on your private repositories. But that wraps it up. This computer is now 100% ready to go for all of my development needs. To recap, the first thing I did was install Homebrew so that I could use that package manager to install version of Node, Java, and Postgres. From there, I downloaded Postman and dBeaver, which, which are GUI methods for interacting with sending HTTP requests and also interfacing with a database. From there, I installed my code editors. I use VS Code for anything on the front end, and then I use IntelliJ for my uh, Java server. And then finally, I set up my GitHub SSH key so that I am able to clone my GitHub repositories and write to them from this new machine. Alrighty, so that is everything that I loaded up onto this machine to be able to accomplish my code tasks. Like I said, I'm a software engineer that is building web applications, uh, building SaaS, and it's nothing crazy. So the question becomes, why do I need so many different machines to accomplish something that is really not that 
uh, memory and CPU intensive. You know, I'm not running large language models on these machines. I'm just doing pretty much basic coding. But for myself, it really just comes down to workflow and where I want to work as well. So I will absolutely acknowledge that this is a first world problem. And honestly, it's not even really a problem at all. But for myself, uh, I'm a software engineer in my day to day. So from eight to five, I am at this desk on this computer uh, doing my software engineering duties. Um, and the thought of sitting at this desk and sitting in this chair and looking at these same exact monitors for another three to four hours after work can sometimes be very daunting and something that I just can't bring myself to do. So to solve that problem, uh, last year I picked up a 2022 MacBook Air and it's been great for being able to escape this area. So I'm able to go into the living room or I'm able to go into my apartment facilities or a coffee shop and code and do a lot of the tasks that I would be able to do at this computer as well. The main problem with doing any type of web development on a single laptop screen for myself is just the when I'm doing front end, being able to have two screens so I can have my code on one monitor and then I can see the live updates in the browser on the other monitor is kind of a game changer for me and it increases my productivity and speed very significantly. So now enter the Mac mini. Uh, so essentially I have, uh, this is, so don't judge me too hard, but this is the closet that I do a lot of my music production in. And as you can see, there is a dual monitor set up in there along with a standing desk. And it really is nice. Uh, my back hurts all the time. So being able to stand up at this desk, have the dual monitors and still escape this desk setup is, is really nice. So having this extra device handy and having another development portal essentially for me to to tap into is really nice again i have to say that all of this is completely unnecessary like if i just had a laptop and doesn't even have to be a super high powered laptop or anything like that i could still accomplish all of the tasks that i'm doing and all the coding that i'm doing um, but like i said i'm just addicted to technology addicted to hardware it brings me a lot of joy being able to have all these different pieces the last kind of piece of this puzzle about having multiple machines and having multiple different development um, areas kind of goes into Mac versus PC. So growing up, I only had PCs, you know, I had like a Dell laptop, then I built a PC and then I kind of just kept going from there. And it was all PC all the way through college until I got my first job out of college where they gave us a MacBook. And that honestly took me a really long time to get used to. But as I started using it more and more and using it for coding specifically, uh, I really started to enjoy it. And so now I'm in this area where it's over four years later and I'm still coding on a MacBook for work. Uh, and I've also picked up a couple of Mac products for my own development work as well. I think at some point there will come a time where I stop coding completely on my PC. You didn't hear that. Um, and it's not anything like in particular, it's just the way that the applications feel. And it could just be that this machine isn't super duper powerful, um, which hurts to say, because I built this PC for like $2,000 a couple years ago, and I can already feel that it is way less performant than at times, even my MacBook Air, but certainly now this Mac mini as well. I still really do love the PC for gaming and that sort of thing. But at some point I really might stop coding entirely on the PC. But anyways, I hope you found it useful to see exactly how I'm setting up a new computer when it comes to software development and all the things that I need in order to accomplish my tasks and keep on coding. I'm curious if you have picked up a Mac mini and you're using it for development or using it for something else, how do you like it? Would you recommend it? Would you not? I would definitely say for myself in terms of music production and coding, this machine has far exceeded my expectations for the price point. So that's my recommendation. If you want to see a more in-depth comparison between this Mac mini, my MacBook Air, and my PC, and kind of just uh, system output when it comes to different coding related tasks, I'd be more than interested in making that video. So just let me know if that would be interesting to y'all. That'll wrap up the video though. I really do appreciate you watching all the way through to the end of this video. Hope you have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next one.